For me, the wood duck heron was love at first sight. Just two materials, easy to tie, impeccably well marked, and a profile that's simply exquisite. It was originated by Nick Lambrow of New Hampshire. I believe he developed it for New England landlocked salmon, but I can tell you it also works great for trout here in the Mid-Atlantic. For a hook, a Dairiki number 710 in size 12 is a good choice. Begin by carefully mashing the barb and getting the hook firmly secured in the jaws of your tying vise. For thread, I've loaded a bobbin with a spool of black UTC 70 denier. Get your thread started on the hook shank, leaving an eye length space behind the eye, and take a few wraps rearward before snipping or breaking off the tag. Continue taking thread wraps to about halfway down the hook shank. The entire rear portion of the fly is formed using a single wood duck flank feather. These have had the fuzzies already stripped away. Select a feather with good markings and long fibers. Strip off any lower, shorter fibers from the stem. Get hold of the very tip of the feather, making sure the stem is among the fibers. Pull the remaining lower fibers downward to expose the tip. Then, use your tying scissors to snip it off, leaving a small, triangular tie-in anchor. Place the anchor against the near side of the hook so the intersection is at your tying thread. Then, take wraps of thread to secure the anchor to the shank. Continue taking thread wraps forward to about two eye lengths behind the hook eye. Get hold of the feather's stem with hackle pliers and pull it to vertical. Squeeze the fibers with the fingertips of your left hand, then pull the stem forward through them like so. I don't really know why, but this folds the feather better than simply pulling your fingers rearward. Once you have all the fibers folded back reasonably well, start making open spiral wraps with the feather up the hook shank. The fibers should orient along the shank with their shiny side facing outward. Continue taking wraps forward with the feather until you reach bare stem, then use your tying thread to firmly, wait a second, I'm gonna take a few more wraps to really get that stem locked down tight. That looks better. You can then snip the stem off nice and close. Take a few more wraps of tying thread to further anchor the stem and smooth out the area. At this point, I like to use a bodkin to separate and align the wood duck fibers so everything looks about right. A single brown soft tackle hen feather works well for the collar, but don't be afraid to try other colors too. I look for a feather with good markings and fibers that are about a hook shank in length. To prep the feather, remove all the lower fuzzy fibers so you're left with something that looks like this. Then, as you did with the wood duck feather, isolate the very tip and use your tying scissors to snip it off into a triangle shaped tie-in anchor. As before, place the anchor against the near side of the hook and take firm thread wraps to secure it. After getting hold of the bare stem with my hackle pliers, I use the same feather folding technique as I did with the wood duck. I also repeat the same wrapping procedure, but on a smaller scale. When you reach your tying thread, use it to secure the stem and then cut the excess off close. Sweep the hackle rearward and take wraps of tying thread to hold it back and build a neat little head on the fly. Follow this with a five or six turn whip finish, seat the knot well, and snip or cut your tying thread free. I'll once again reach for my bodkin to unclump and spread out the fibers, this time with particular attention paid to the collar. A drop of head cement applied to the thread wraps ensures they won't come unraveled and adds a nice finished look to the fly. This is one of those patterns that gives me a warm and fuzzy feeling whenever I tie or fish it and it helps remind me just how beautiful and simple truly effective flies can be.